السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم <تصفيق> يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected listeners <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his limitless mercy has given us has put us into this world and given us a complete recipe for success, for being successful in this world because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to fail the test of this world. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this complete code of life to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself that have come from Allah himself <coughs> and this Quran the three basic things that it talks about the three basic subjects that it talks about are the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah wants human beings to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophethood and the finality of the prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, him being the true last final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And the third thing is that all human beings have to die, and all human beings have to be accountable for what they did in this world. And there is a limitless reward or a never-ending punishment for those who did good or those who did not do good who neglected and forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indulged in this worldly life <coughs> so therefore in several places in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us to not be happy and content with this world and the life that we have and the luxuries and the comforts that we have in this world and forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. In fact, the very last ayah of the Quran, which was revealed according to some Mufassireen roughly a month before the Prophet ﷺ passed away, and according to some Mufassireen only a few days before the Prophet ﷺ passed away from this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Fear, be mindful, remember, be very conscious, forever conscious of the day where you are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ مَا كَسَبَتْ Every nafs, every soul will be rewarded for what they earned. They will be repaid for what they earned. If they did good, وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ There will be no cruelty on that day. It will be your earning. Allah is just. Allah is adil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do justice. Whatever you earn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pay you accordingly. And therefore the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has also in several of his hadiths, in his examples from his life, constantly reminded us that do not forget about the hereafter. 
do not forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I remember correct, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a hadith that about my ummah, about my people, I am not afraid that they will, they will start doing kufr. But what I am afraid of is that they will be indulged in this world. They will be extensively beyond the boundaries they will be engrossed in the activities and the funds and the pleasures of this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. They will be busy with their wealth. They will be busy with the luxuries and the comforts that they have in this world and forget their real purpose. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. What is the recipe for success on the Day of Judgment? <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ was asked once, the Prophet ﷺ said that every single soul, every single person, they will enter Jannah, they will enter into paradise, they will not do so because of something that they did that they deserve Jannah, but they will only enter Jannah because of the mercy, by virtue of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Sahabi asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, even you, even you, the most beloved Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the man with the most good deeds, the man with whom nobody can compete, even you, Ya Rasulullah, you will enter Jannah with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, even me. I will also enter Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the giving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what is the thing for us to do? While we are alive, while we have time, while we have, while we have uh, time until we die. While, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us a duration. We have to do those things that will attract the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to make our effort to become those to whom Allah is going to show mercy. And <clears throat> who does Allah show mercy to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. The people of the hellfire and the people of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at several points have mentioned their conversations, the real actual conversations that they will have. At one place, it is said that the people of Hellfire and the people of Jannah will be talking thus. The people of Jannah would say that we found the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be true. That Allah had promised us that you live according to the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will enter into Jannah, a place of pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will say that we found this to be true. Allah fulfilled his promise. They will be speaking from the Jannah. And, the, and they would ask those people, did you also find the promise of Allah to be true? Allahu Akbar. What will be the response to the, of the people of hellfire? They will be put in hellfire. What did they find? They also found the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be true. That they lived a life of negligence and it is very real, they found it to be very real and very true that they did end up in hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa protect us. In another surah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that Kullu nafsim bima kasabat rahina. Whatever you do in this world, you will be mortgaged for it. You will be kept. You will be held. You will not get your freedom. You will be held for what you did in this world. You will be held. You will be captured, you will be captivated, you will not be free on the day of judgment, every single soul will be in captivity for what they earned, for what they did, bima kasabat, whatever they did in this world, it is going to hold them, it is going to keep them captured, unless they are freed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, illa ashab al yameen, the people of the right side, the people who did good and listened to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and did not forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. Then, these people, Ashab al yameen they will ask the people of the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that conversation that is going to take place. Ma salaka kum fi saqar. They will ask the people of hellfire, what happened to you? What puts you in the hellfire? What landed you there? Ma salaka kum fi saqar. What puts you there? And they would mention a few things. So the people of hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from landing there, from going there for even a blink of an eye, even a much smaller duration than that. They would tell what our life used to be. What, what was our ways in this world? 
قالوا they would say the first thing لم نكو من المصلين لم نكو من المصلين we were not from among those people who used to pray we were not essentially we did not pray we did not worry we did not care about our salah how easy Allah has made in this world that in your whole day's routine you take out five minutes and not all those five minutes at the same time but at divided intervals you take out five to ten minutes for five times during the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Nabi is promising you Jannah very easy very easy in this world to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world is very very easy and very uh, very cheap very easy you can do it without a lot of effort without spending a lot of money but those people on the day of judgment they will be saying imagine the the deprivation that they had we were not from among those who used to pray we were not the people who prayed and neither did we fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor did we fulfill the rights of other creations so the people who were in needy it never occurred to us we did not feed them ever we did not worry about their their worldly needs so the people who are musalleen the people who pray and not only pray but are from among the people who pray imagine the think about the style of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying we were not from among the people who used to pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving importance to the act itself but also the act being done in the company of others so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the company of those people وَلَمْ نَكُوا نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ and we were not about we were not we did not feed now this is نُطْعِم we did not feed it is not talking about the congregation or the company but it is saying that we did not feed the people who were needy وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ the people who used to make fun or the people who used to have fun we were among those people we used to enjoy our life very much when everybody was having fun we were also having fun again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the company we were not we did not have the company or we were not among from that group who used to pray or worry about their salah rather we were from among the people who used to indulge in fun and in having pleasures with those who used to indulge may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us my dear respected brothers our companies are very important the company that we keep is very 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 important that company the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said you are on the deen of your khalil you are on the deen you are on the way you are on the religion of your friend so therefore be very careful mind you who you are befriending who are you spending your time with may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a reality of this may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding of this so my dear respected brothers these are the features these are the things a few of them inshallah as time permits we'll talk more about these but these three things are the first three things that the people will mention we did not pray and we were not among the group of people we were not with the people who used to pray and we did not care we were so indulged in our own luxuries and our comforts that we did not care who is needy around us who should we feed which is something that attracts the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praying and praying in congregation attracts the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like nothing else feeding the poor caring about the people around you fulfilling the rights of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attracts the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like nothing else and being with the people who forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who make fun of deen who make fun of the things of deen who indulge excessively in the luxuries of this world to the point that they forget about the reality of this life and their end and what is coming forth that attracts the anger and displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like nothing else may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being among those people from being among the khaireen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among from the musalleen ameen ya rabbal alameen may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who are successful in the hereafter those who are successful in the hereafter those who live their life in such a way that the hereafter is right before their eyes all the time 
بے اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ میکس دوست پی بل آمین یا رب العالمین ربنا تقبل منا انکا انتا سمیع العلیم و تمعلینا انکا انتا تواب الرحیم و آخر دعوانا الحمدللہ رب العالمین بردر زہر پر